can't whistle, so Keith is our official whistler. We may find a few of the others that are capable of doing that. So, again, thank you, everyone that's coming out. I'm excited about this trip. I hope you are. It's getting closer. It's really going to happen. Yeah. It's really going to happen. So, okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is going to do a quick review of what we're doing with the quick synopsis. Um, you got the itinerary at an earlier time. Uh, kind of uh, telling you what we're going to do. We're going to fly into Tel Aviv, which is uh, uh, right up here. Jerusalem's here. So Tel Aviv is right on the coast, and it's right next to what we would say Jaffa, but they say Jaffa with Fs. And uh, there's Jaffa gates in the Jerusalem, and we'll be staying right in there, and Jerusalem, I mean, uh, Jaffa and, and uh, Tel Aviv are intermingled. And so we'll fly in there, and uh, the group of 10 gets in at 10 something in the morning. The group of 35 will get in there at 420, and uh, Tarantino's and Louise will be coming in from their locations and join us, and they'll all come with a big group. We'll be bussed out of the airport over to our hotel, and we'll have an evening. So that very first evening, we'll have a buffet dinner, and you can care less. Because you're gonna be tired. <laughs> is that encouraging or what? Yeah. <laughs> so that first day, there's gonna be a lot of hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Um, so bring a book. <laughs> uh, I have games on my phone. I have to have something I can doodle my mind away, and time just kind of passes. I'm like, oh, you know, maybe here it is. So, uh, just going to be patient, I'm going to tell you that. So especially the group of 35, who we sit around in airports like these other guys in 10 are flying. And that's why they get there earlier we do. We come in here, and our first day is going to be a big day because we're going to go up the coast, we're going to visit various sites, we're going to go over to Nazareth and then Tiberias. We'll spend three nights there and on the Sea of Galilee. And so that first day is the biggest day, naturally. We have a lot of geography to cover. And the one thing that they wanted to skip and I didn't want to skip it, was going up Mount Carmel. I wanted to go where Elijah was up there, and he confronted the prophets of Baal, and I really got off in that spot. <laughs> and not too far, far from there was another mountain where we could get up and stand and look over the valley, and we can see where Armageddon was going to happen. I don't know about you, but I didn't want to miss that. But I think you might want to see that if we're there that close, so it's a big deal. Are we doing it? We're going to do it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> well, Lord, what? I found out uh, our tour guide and the driver, and myself, Pastor Russ and whoever, will have control that we can manipulate stuff somewhat within the tour that goes on. You know, skip that place, go to that place. I mean, you can't do a lot of that, but because we have to have arrangements to get into these various sites. But these sites are like going to Polkagan Park or a national park or a state park. I mean, and there's fees to be paid, and that's already been paid on our behalf, all that kind of stuff. So we can't just willy-nilly, but we can... Out of belief. So I said, I want to go to Mount Carmel because that made an impression. I still remember it every day. I can flash that back in my head, more so some of the other sites we've done. So we're going to go to Nazareth. How many people do you think are in current day Nazareth? What would you guess? Give me a guess. How many people in that town? 50,000. 20,000. 10,000. Way more. 120,000 people in Nazareth. <laughs> And we'll take us out on the side, along the side, and they'll take us out to the actual cliff where they took Jesus. That when he came back and he said, you know, I'm the Messiah, this is being fulfilled. You know, he, he reads the scripture, it's going to be fulfilled. And they took him out to the cliff to throw him off. We get to go to that cliff and we get to stand and look like, yeah, I see. That doesn't look very cool. So, and that'll be one of our spiritual moments. I can tell you that. We'll read the scriptures for that. And we'll do that throughout the different times. Tiberius, Sea of Galilee, uh, there'll be one time we will... Um, actually be on a, a boat and we'll be we'll sail on the Sea of Galilee. And if you feel like getting up and walking in the water, give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll fan out different places. So I remember I told you before, there are three sites, three areas from the 67 war. The 67 war. The Gaza Strip, the Golan Heights, and the West Bank. That's all Palestinian territory that Israel still occupies since 67. Palestinians came up along with it. I mean, so those, those people. So that's what they always talk about, the two-state solution. Palestinians hate the Israelis. The Israelis just try to tolerate them, put up with them. The Palestinians are way better off than they would if they weren't there. 
Israel knows how to run a country. I mean, they're Jews, right? I mean, they know how to run one. <laughs> and they're good with it. So, anyways, we'll go to different places, sites, and then we come back down and we go to Jerusalem for seven nights. One night here, three nights there, seven nights there. And so, and we'll fan out. You'll have an opportunity to swim in the Dead Sea, I hope. I mean, we're gonna, that's our, our agenda, unless something goes wrong. It probably won't be hot out, but when Sherry and I were there 10 years ago, we went on those exact same time, and it was cool, but I would do it again in a heartbeat, even being an old man I am. So <laughs> it's like being in an inner tube on top of the water, but there's no inner tube. <laughs> you walk out there, and you just want to pop up and float around like a bobber. You know, it's obviously. And John, didn't you say that the water's warmer than the air temperature? It was, yeah. And so um, we'll we'll see a lot of things. So, uh, Jericho is right here, and then just south and east along the Jordan River is where we will go. Um, it was a very impressive place that Sherry and I remember very much. And if you want to be baptized in the Jordan, <coughs> that's where we're going to do it. It is not the cleanest place to get <laughs> baptized, but it is the next spot where Joshua brought the Israelites over on dry ground. <coughs> that spot is right where we're going to be. They came over on dry ground. It's also the exact spot where Jesus was baptized. So I'm thinking we're gonna get baptized. We could come up here for the Jordan and the company I mean, starts flowing out of the Sea of Galilee. That's where most of the baptisms are done, but there are a number of them down where we're down there. And if you want to be baptized, um, talk about it ahead of time, but you're gonna need a swimming suit. And uh, you know, you can be prepared to get baptized, and there's a place to change clothes there at that site. To me, it left a big impression on me. We didn't get baptized, but just the idea of being at that spot. And then just a couple weeks ago, we read that uh, Jim Firdow had a, uh, he read it, that scripture, and, and that whole area comes to life in my memory from that time. So that's kind of our route. And then our last day, we go from Jerusalem, the bus is back up to the airport. We take off uh, at 1220 a.m. That's okay, you won't mind it because your body's so screwed up, you don't care what time it is. <laughs> so, okay, Keith, thank you. Give Keith a hand for holding that up. I'm sure you've said what's the time change? Seven hours. There's a seven hour time change between us and them. Okay, so I, uh, I worked on about three or four different uh, tour companies. Uh, get this picture up here. This is our tour guide. His name is Yanni Simmons. He's a Messianic Jew. I take him to be in his 40s. I've uh, creeped him out on uh, Facebook. Is that what you do? I don't know how do you do that? I mean, I went to his Facebook page, checked him out. And uh, uh, I said, I, I told these people, I want a Messianic Jew. I want a, I want a saved Jewish person. If you've ever met anyone that's been saved who really gets it, a Jew who is saved gets it better than we do. I mean, they, they got it. They come in from both sides of, of, the, of the spiritual side of that. I'm asking you to pray for this guy every day, if you can, before we go. Let's pray that God blesses him. And so that when he's on our trip, he will know that something's special about us. So that uh, we have God's favor. Pastor, would you just take time? Would you pray for Ghani Simmons for our group right now, please? Can you get your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> your mouth too full to do it? My eyes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let me try. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, we just want to pray uh, for, for Yanni, and we're thankful that he's a brother. And, uh, and we just pray, God, that you give him good health and uh, would uh, just continue to watch over him as we prepare to encounter each other that we're a family that's much bigger than just one country, uh, but from every tribe and every tongue and every nation. And so, God, thank you uh, again in advance for the impact. We pray that uh, you would uh, speak through him and allow our uh, allow us to be an encouragement to him um, that he is not alone in um, in the family of God. And uh, so, Lord, we love you and lift him up to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Pray for Yanni Simmons. As often as the Lord will bring it to your mind. Um, I don't know, maybe he's not that good of a guide. We had a fantastic guide on our bus that we had before when we were there. But he wasn't saved. And there were a couple of the buses that had Messianic Jews in their bus. 
And he's always just a little bit envious of having that little extra edge. I mean, our, our guy could quote scripture like you would not believe. Probably better than most of you sitting in this room. He was really good and accurate, but he didn't know the Lord. And I thought, how do you quote that scripture and know that book and not be part of the Lord? And every guy has to be a state certified. They have to take tests and certification and everything. So, I mean, this guy is a real deal. I don't know him personally, but this was dude. Emmanuel Tours, someone's asked me, have uh, three to five tours like us per week. Wow. So, uh, we're just another, you know, deer in the cog. Uh, they've been good to work with us, so no problem. Everything's going, I think, okay, Laura, what'd you say? Mm -hmm. Laura's been doing a great job behind the scenes, a lot of work. Let's give Laura a hand right now. <laughs> Lots of detail she's been working on. And Keith is going to be our official BC Tour uh, photographer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're excited. So he'll be taking lots and lots of pictures. We'll make sure we're gonna, you're all going to get some group pictures back of all of us uh, as part of the deal. Uh, luggage tags. See your luggage tags? Yes. Those are not an option. You cannot go on a trip. You cannot bring a bag because you don't have that luggage tag on it. You get it? Did, did I stutter? <laughs> that sounds kind of mean, but I'm not seriously. We want those luggage tags on there. They're nothing fancy, but they're gaudy. Mm -hmm. So if there's 150, 200 bags there, and we have 50 bags stuck in the middle of them, guess what? We should be able to find ours pretty quick. You can have anything else, any other tag you want on it, but we want that tag on any bag. And we want that on your backpack. We want that on your luggage. Anything that you're carrying that needs ID, uh, so we try to get those. Yeah. But it's not accurate. Well, then we screwed up. My address isn't correct. It's close, it's not correct. Okay. Well, talk to my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, we put phone, did we put phone numbers on it or didn't we? Yeah. We figured we put the phone numbers on, which you may be a little bit offended, but if someone if you lose your bag and you're getting down the road 50 miles, I mean, just if they could call that number and you pick up your phone, the chances of getting your bag is way higher. That's why the phone number. Any questions about the tag? Put the tags on, even if you have other tags, that's fine. You can have multiple tags. Just make sure those are on the bags. And these are on here, number one, so that we can identify who's with us, okay? <coughs> Sweatshirts. T-shirts. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I don't know that we talked about it, but we felt like we needed them on the day. Well, we so definitely, if possible, if you're going to wear a jacket or something, I would like if you could be wearing them the day we go, mm -hmm. so we can identify who's in our group, and if there's two people like Lally like, like over here, and we're getting on the plane, like, come on, you know, maybe you know they're, they're part of our group. I don't know. I mean, that's partly why we did those, not just for fun, but we'll partly identified, and it's mainly when we're traveling, more so than when we're in the group. And go ahead. Um, the sweatshirts that everybody has are a little heavier. We got some samples of a thinner one that we have like one of each size, like small, medium, large, extra large, and a 2X, and it's, it's basically just a little bit thinner, so if any ladies or anybody who prefers a thinner one, we have these, I, we haven't talked about selling them, I don't know. We want to do about that, but there well, first of all, let's just, find a home for them. So there's yeah. five, there's only five in one in each side. So, if you're interested, let me know. So, I mean, we're hoping that we'll have a time where we're all dressed up to exactly the same one as the group picture. Well, that's part of what it's for. And the other thing is, when we're traveling over and traveling back, you know, it's really easy to get scattered in a thousand people in an airport. You know, we just want to identify as best as we can that you're part of our group. So, that's one of the reasons we do that. Um, in the trip, uh, long sleeves or a hooded sweatshirt would be comfortable a lot of days. Some days it's maybe a long sleeve t-shirt would be all you need. Or you'd be, obviously you can wear other things. So, um, Luggage. Um, everyone gets one larger bag uh, up to 50 pounds free as part of your ticket. If you try to bring two bags, it's going to be a $100 bill for the second bag. And you're going to pay for that at the airport. What? If they can't weigh their bag at home, they know how much room they got in there. Yeah, try to weigh your bag so you understand what you're dealing with. Bathroom scales generally work, so uh, it's a little hard to get them set up, but if you can get them on the bathroom scale, you'll get a concept. And then Sherry's really good about every time we go to the airport and we put them on their official scales, 
we are is looking to see how close did we hit it, you know. So she's got down pat pretty good to how to hit that, but don't go over 50 pounds. And if it's over 50 pounds, you're not going to want to lug that thing around. So it's too much. Figure out how to minimize. We talked about some of those things before on some of that. The carry-on size is okay. They can bring it. You can bring a carry-on. Uh, I have a backpack, and then I have my three-quarter, so a completely full-size suitcase. It generally comes in around 37 or 38 pounds. That's what I plan to take. So, um, yeah, just don't overpack. For if I mean, you want to pack enough, but not 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 get crazy. Now that luggage was that per person? Per person. Per person. At least per person. So. Uh, we've been working and getting all the seating assignments done. We're tussling back and forth uh, and trying to get that all in. So we're trying to get uh, as many requests as possible on that. Uh, trip insurance, you want to talk about that? So. Uh, yeah, in your envelopes, you should have a card that says IMG on it. This is medical insurance. John was able to work that into the cost of the trip so you don't have to pay extra for this. Um, and what this is, is if you get injured or have an illness, it pretty much covers everything. If, if you have a complication from an illness, it'll even cover that. It just doesn't cover like an ongoing treatment of an illness. So if you need a dialysis, that wouldn't be covered. But pretty much anything else, any kind of situation where you're injured or sick, and so what would happen is you would, if you went to the doctor or a hospital, you would give them that card and then it would be up to that facility to decide whether they'll take the card and bill the insurance or they may ask you to pay in full at the time. So that's something you might want to keep in mind so, as far as... Yeah, if that happens, we'll be there to back you up if there's any issue mm -hmm. on how much you'll get your credit card, well, a credit card to help yeah. back that up. So, yeah. But that is a big deal. That piece of paper is a big deal. That is your card, so don't lose it. Keep it same place. You're kind of with your passport, that type of thing. In other words, there's a few people that we didn't get it for, but you already had full insurance. Would be more than happy to reimburse you the cost back uh, in cash for what we got there. So you're being treated fairly uh, on that. So just so you're aware, because you already had full insurance, so we did not get that. If that's okay, right? I mean. That's what we had all lined up. Right, right. and so the, you can see on the itinerary, the other um, possibility that you can purchase separately is total trip insurance. So if you're concerned that you might get sick and not be able to go on the trip at all, this insurance would reimburse you the full 3750 per person. And the cost is about $200 if you're under 60 years of age, 275 if you're over. <coughs> and you would contact Mario at that number there if you're interested in total trip insurance. And that is just the, that cost, the medical part's already done. So the med medical is uh, supposed to be zero dollar deductible up to 250,000. So hopefully that would cover <coughs> any foreseeable situation. And we hope and pray we don't use a penny of it. Carolyn has used this a number of times with your mission trips. Am I correct on that? Yes. And so she's yes. had that, but we don't know if it works because no one's ever tried no it. One's ever <laughs> <laughs> and we hope we don't even learn if it works this time. So, but it's there. We're trying to come up with together. It was, it was reasonably affordable. It was like 40 bucks or. But SI has had to use it. Students okay. International has had to use it. And it has worked every time. And so they're the ones that you had always worked with to get always it. Always to yeah, get okay. it. So anyways, we believe them to be reputable, and we're trying to follow suit with what we have some experience with. It was very helpful, much more affordable than some of the stuff I was finding earlier. On some of the stuff was three or $400 a person, and that was kind of high. So I don't know. Chris, you do, you do that. Do you remember how much you spend for your, you for the whole trip, your insurance? Yeah, it was for the whole trip. Yeah, it was different based on ages. Oh, okay. So my brother and his wife were a couple hundred dollars. I think their daughter was like a hundred and something. I'm old, so my like <laughs> Chris, you're probably one of the younger ones in there, I tell you. So anyways, anyways uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll reimburse you guys for the cash so it's equivalent, so you can get treated fairly that way. Um, how many of you are concerned about war? How many of you hear the news? How many of you are concerned about war? Anyone concerned about that? <laughs> 
Well, we aren't going to let our jets fly out underneath where they're shooting missiles around. That's, <laughs> gonna, that's the first mistake. Uh, I'm not concerned at all. Um, I wouldn't go if I thought there was any chance in the world. And I certainly wouldn't want to take 47 people if I thought there was any chance. Uh, huge amount of hype. The tourism in Israel has an all-time peak ever in its history. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every year. People doing what we're doing, exact same thing. Um, Emmanuel Tours would not bring us over there and have a liability in their backs if they really thought something was going on. So I'm just telling you, rest assured, there's a phenomenal amount of propaganda in the Middle East, and particularly when it comes to Israel, about those on the other side of the fence that don't like things going on, they hate Jews, and we Christians support Israel. I hope you come home and are a big, big supporter of Israel. When we went to Israel and came back, I'm a big supporter of Israel. From the standpoint is, uh, God says in his word, you know, those who bless Israel, he'll bless them. And I totally believe that's one reason I think the United States has been blessed as much as it has up to this point. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully we'll go. It'll really be a good experience. <clears throat> um, and, and that map, that little strip down there called the Gaza Strip, the Israelis have given that back to the Palestinians. And that's where they fire off little rockets all the time. And it's all for propaganda. It's not really, they try to make it look like a massive war. There's nothing going on. It's just, it's stupidity, you know. And, uh, and that happens all the time. It happens all the time. So please don't fret about it. I can't say nothing ever and ever. What I'm just saying is um, what you hear in the news is it's not, it's fake news. <laughs> I guess that's what it is, about exactly what you say. Uh, okay. Remember, your plugins, the way you have them here, are 110, they don't work. You gotta plug them into uh, a plug-in, a converter, with two round plugs. Has everyone got out and looked and comfortable? Have you researched that yet? Mm -hmm. Anyone that has not? Is that gonna, is that gonna work with the CPAP machine? Yep. The plug you got yes. here? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> it does work. Hey, John. Yeah. The difference between just the plug adapter and a converter. You're absolutely so, correct. So you need a converter, not just the plug. Good point. You need a converter, not just the plug. Yes, absolutely correct. Yeah. You, to need, you need the converter. Um, so That's your electrical the, the, guy is giving you advice. Well, he is. He knows electricity. Yeah, this guy absolutely. knows. So <laughs> listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if anything blows up, he'll come to your room and fix it. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> the only charges is $100 an hour, so that's okay. So, uh, anyways, I uh, want to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, don't bring your, you're welcome to, bring your big heavy Bible if you want to. But it might be better if you came with a study Bible. Um, Try to get something a little more compact. I mean, everything you want to do is the idea of saving weight and space. Those two things will be your enemy for that whole time. Don't try to get anything that's too bulky, too big. Uh, we would suggest bring a... Bring a that size. Can you have a... It's a size. Oh, oh, okay. I think, I think you had your hand up. That size. I mean, yeah. Like, it's about that size. That's, I mean, they're, they're different sizes, but just, I mean, just give you one. I mean, the pastor may go through some scriptures, but if you have a travel Bible, you can pop it open and, and follow along. Or if, it's on your, if you have an app on your phone, I don't know. Make sure you talk to your phone companies before you go. And make sure you talk to your credit card companies if you plan to use them. And let them know, this is where I'm going to be from this date to this date. And so they're aware that if you plan to have access to a credit card, which these will work almost anywhere around the world, but you gotta have it so it operates. One time Sherry and I went to Mexico and we had this service that kind of oversaw all of our cards and one card didn't like it, so every card we had got shut down. <laughs> and it was a day and a half yet, we didn't have much cash or credit or anything else. So I had to go around borrowing money, that was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> so tell your credit card companies, tell your phone companies before you go, this is what I'm doing and they'll coach you through what you need to do. Is there a fair amount of Wi-Fi there? I, I, I can't help but think there would be. I mean, I was there 10 years ago, so there wasn't that Wi-Fi around here. So what? Does it, the hotel yeah. cell have it, I think. The yeah. 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 So okay. okay. Some are of you. Are you using the cell phone thing? Are you suggesting that we get a pay for two weeks of cell service there? 
No, well, some should I use it? I was gonna say some companies will like I know AT and T will allow like if you get a call, get on it, the internet or anything like that, they'll charge you ten dollars for a twenty four hour period. Right. Yeah. If you don't use it after that, yeah. you're only charging that ten dollars. Right. But you can do Wi Fi calls if you want to. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just like. I, so I was there 10 years ago, so Wi-Fi is a much bigger deal today than it was then, you know. Uh, we had a black, I had a Blackberry when I was there, and all I could do at, with that thing was text. Well, I'll never forget, sitting on the South Temple Mount Steps, having church with all 650 people at the Chuck Swindoll thing, and texting my kids, this is so cool. <laughs> they weren't even up yet. They were so asleep. <laughs> but it was so cool. I had to share it with them. It was, I mean, I was, I was just, just blew my mind. I was actually sitting on the actual steps. They weren't made over or plowed or bulldozers. These the actual steps that Jesus would have walked in and out of the Temple Mount. <clears throat> and we got to be able to sit there and see that and, uh, and be part of that. Next we had church there. I don't think we will have church there. Uh, but uh, that's not set up the way we're going to do it. So every morning, buffet breakfast at the hotels. Every night, buffet dinner at the hotels. You're in charge of your own lunch, and that'll be on the way, and there'll be places to get some snacks or a little lunch or little quick food places. Um, and then you had some ideas and suggestions on money. Yeah, on the, the third bullet item about currency. Um, yeah, okay. We. We had talked about you guys could bring shekels if you want, but you know, talking to Carolyn and Tammy Robertson has traveled a lot too. They um, American dollars, and they were telling you too. So we're going to give you. We're going to go back I'm back up to the tips. I'm a squirrel. I got my head lights going on. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we are going to. We, we've collected part of your fee as the money to tip our driver and our guide. And we're going to follow the guidelines we're given and tip them that amount. We're going to give them a, just a big, big tip for me from that. And you've already participated by your payment. We're going to give you envelopes of cash back the day of February 23rd for you to have made tip money. And it's suggested that two dollars per person per day is what you should live or give for that. Now we've got collect the money. We're going to give that back to you in cash. So there's no excuse that Brighton Chapel doesn't pay proper tips. I don't want a reputation that we're not a good group. My only suggestion is that we're going to pay the base amount of a tip for the driver and the tour guide. The <laughs> tour guide can make or break our trip, you know, um, and I hope he makes it, you know, uh, and the driver too. And so we have the amounts in there, but I would suggest that if either one of those two guys, which are a huge part of making our trip successful, and if you feel blessed by them, I would suggest you might want to give more out of your own pocket. That'll be more of a, an over above. You've already paid the base amount, and that's satisfactory. No more is needed. But I want you to underwear those two right there. The maids, I think, just you know, you never know who your maid's going to be, and it's already after you've already gone. Just we'll give you the two dollars per day per person. We'll give that's, that cash, and that's what you're going to use. That's so. American money, or insurance? we're going to give that to you in American money because we were told that was fine. Emmanuel Tour said. They'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about American money, the American dollar is extremely strong. It's a safe haven in the world. So you give American money to a place like that, who's you know pretty current back and forth in the U.S. anyways, no problem. They'll get cash and they'll do well. You know, mm -hmm. they might actually go up versus down. So, mm -hmm. someone had a question. Go ahead. So you pay, pay the maid daily. Okay. Well, but because it's different maid every day. Probably. I mean, at least. Yeah, I would suggest because it may have different maids coming and going. I'd say just every day, just drop a couple bucks down on your bed or wherever, or the dresser for your maid. And like I said, we're going to give you that money to do that with. So, um, so go ahead about the other. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so the 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 first bullet under currency, um, the cost for lunch is about ten dollars per day per person. So that's about one hundred thirty dollars if you wanted to pay cash for that because it might be just some small little place where they wouldn't necessarily take a card. So you might want to have that kind of cash available to pay for lunch. And also when you get there and the first thing you buy, you give them a 20, they're going to give you shekels back. Yeah. So you will have shekels right away. And that's in any country they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to buy something little, you can use those. But mm -hmm. this way you don't get stuck with a whole bunch of shekels at the end of your trip. If you just you know use your own cash as you go. So. 
the recommended is $300 cash per person. Just, you know, that might be too much with your kids, but um, if, you're, if you're thinking $130 just for lunch per person, and then you might buy souvenirs or whatever else. So that's just sort of a recommendation. And you can use your card. You will have to pay a fee plus the conversion rate. And Tammy Robertson was telling us about this so organization. This, Tammy Robertson is the very last person who signed up. Some of you know her. She lives in Sturgis. And she just signed up. She's the last person. She couldn't make it here today. So that's what we're talking about. We're saying Tammy Robertson. Yeah. So, yeah so. The Smith's old neighbor. She's moving up to Grand Rapids. That's why she yeah, couldn't be here. Yeah, the Smiths were kind of hard on her, so she's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Moving out. <laughs> um, so anyway, she has children who have studied abroad and been in Europe a lot, and she uses <coughs> this company called TransferWise, and there's their website there. They, When you put your money into this account, it automatically converts it to whatever currency you tell it, and it's a really simple phone app. And so you put in 20 bucks, you tell it to convert it to shekels, so you don't have to pay the conversion rate, and the fee is really low. She gets a, and you get a, um, a little bonus if you sign up through her. Mm -hmm. So it, you can message her and she can send you an invite if you're interested in doing that. Well, then, then you can invite other people and you can make a few bucks on it too, I think. So, <laughs> right. But right. The, big, the big thing is it really is a cost saving and it's pretty convenient. I just got to wrap my head around it. That was right before I went in the hospital, so that's why I don't know. <laughs> my head wasn't clear. Yeah, so you can look at it and decide if you want to do it. It's pretty simple to use or not use. And if you don't use up all the money you transferred into it, you could transfer it right back out. So yeah. it's, it's pretty easy. And Tammy, sounded, it sounded pretty slick. Yeah, Tammy's very friendly. She'd be happy to talk to you all about it. And she's in our messenger group. So If you can't get a hold of her, just get a hold of Jen. She don't mind. So. Yeah. <laughs> she knows all right, that. Jen? <laughs> yeah, but you can use your own card, too. If you think you may buy one or two souvenirs, you may have one or two purchases on your credit card. It's not that big of a deal. You'll pay the fee. You might, you know, it's up to you to make that call. Okay. Good. So that's fine too. I mean, we we don't care. We just want you to be aware. Okay. Linda had a question. She's not here today um, about if she would have shekels to be able to convert them back when she's here in the states. I know Farmer's Day Bank, they can do that for you. Yep. Um, but are most banks, I know she's up in Michigan, does anyone know if... Well, another thing is she could do it in the airports. As we get back in the airport, okay. you can do it right there in Tel Aviv, where you get it when we get back to Washington, Dallas. And are the rates a little bit more... You're, you'll pay a fee for that convenience, but it's right. better for dollars and shekels set in your drawer. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Right, so you might be better off using your card instead of... Will take back to yeah, I think most banks will. Yeah. They get a fee for it. I mean, you know, don't, you know, they're, they're, don't worry, we're not worried about them. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but is the exchange rate a little different? Do you still want to charge it? Yeah, the exchange rate, yeah, the exchange rate is always going to vary to different places. But if you want to, right when you get in the airports, there's exchange places and they make a fee for doing that, but it's convenient. And you can write back to US dollars, put it in your purse or pocket, and away you go. So. John, yeah. Uh, talk about souvenirs. As everybody remember, when you buy a souvenir and put it in your suitcase, that adds to your 50 pounds. There we go. <laughs> and it should be on top. <laughs> Don't buy a giraffe that big and try to get it in yeah. your suitcase. Hey, but. They also told us that everything should be on top that you buy so you can show them. Yeah, there we go. Anything you would buy as a souvenir, put it on the very top when you pack it to come home because they are very thorough. Israel has never had a hijacked plane. Never. <laughs> And there's a reason why they haven't had a hijack plane. And their TSA, I think, is generally more friendly than ours, or, you know, what the equivalent. Uh, but they're very thorough about your bags and x-rays and stuff like that. So uh, I, just, I just admire uh, their very common sense over there. Remember I told you, every, every young man, every young lady, about 17 years of old, they go into military service every single, uh, you'll see, Beautiful young ladies, 18, 19, 20 years old, carrying around guns as big as them, and they know how to use them. Uh, so, uh, point is, this will make sure that every, this will make sure that everyone, everyone knows how to protect themselves. That's kind of what it. But their gun laws are stricter than ours, in the common sense. But they have them; they need to break them out. So, what are you going to say? It sounds like Lagrange County. Oh. <laughs> yeah, good looking women. Yeah, good looking women. Yeah, good looking women.
Uh, we're going to see some cool things. The Whaling Wall. Um, we're going to go to Bethlehem. We weren't. Uh, our group before wasn't in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is in the occupied territory, West Bank. Um, so that's one reason our group didn't go there. Uh, we'll go through a site when we go to where uh, Joshua and the Israelites came across. We'll go through a lane and it'll have landmines and barbed wire on both sides. It's still from the 67 war. I don't know why they haven't cleaned it up, but I don't know. There's something going on there. Um, there'll be, there's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to see. You're going to see things that uh, you never thought of. A lot of things I never thought about or maybe didn't make an impression on anything I could remind you of. But just be open and ready. Uh, Pastor is going to be studying up on some of the different things. Every evening when we have dinner, we'll also have a room and we'll have a meeting uh, right after dinner. And the pastor will be lots of times where he'll be talking to us uh, about uh, things that we've, things we've seen or things we're going to see. Uh, Yanni uh, will obviously have his Bible out. And so have your Bibles along, but just try not to bring in anything that's really big and bulky that you get tired of carrying. Uh, when we get in and out of the sites, we're in and out of the bus a lot. Um, so you'll be able to leave all your valuable possessions in the bus. The driver's there, he protects it, and they're pros. That's what they do full time. That's their living. And you know how to protect that stuff. And so it'll be good that way. So we're coming down to the end. Uh, right now we're thinking maybe 6 o'clock. We're not sure of that exact time. We're going to confer with our bus people. We're having Cardinal Bus is hired to come and bring us a nice luxury bus to come and pick us up at Brighton for international travels. We will be the first international travels, I believe, out of Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever do it again, but whatever. <laughs> and then, uh, so we're gonna bring your cars in. It'll be a Sunday morning. We're gonna park them in the far reaches of our parking lots so we don't mess up anyone else, but it's free. Mm -hmm. If you park it in Chicago O'Hara, that's going to cost you some money. You, will, you might as well come back and buy another car by the time you pay out your rent to get in a parking lot for a couple weeks. Um, so that's one reason we're doing the bus here, and then we just get everyone coagulated and get them together, get in the bus, we're safe, and away we go. The first day for the group of 35, we got to get there earlier than the 35 needs to be there, but we got to get that group of 10 off. They're flying Air Canada, and so we will, we will do our messaging and calling if necessary to make sure you're fully aware of what time the, park, the bus is going to park. Right now we're thinking six. Uh, you know, it could vary a little bit one way or another. Yeah. And we'll let the bus company dictate, you know, what they think is comfortable to them. And we'll confer with the airlines, make sure. So we'll probably go up and drop off the group of 10 at Air Canada and then go around the thing and come back and drop off the 35 because we'll have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we get to Newark, when we get to Newark, our, our group of 35 will have plenty of time there. So those are a lot of waiting around that day. I'm gonna apologize right now, so don't complain to me later. <laughs> I'm already saying I'm sorry. <laughs> but we cut out hundreds of dollars on what the flight was maybe gonna cost by putting this together in such a way like that. <coughs> I think we're pretty close to what we have. Um, are there any questions? Someone had to leave by two, and I'm trying to make sure we're going to meet that deadline. Are we okay? Perfect. Yeah. Ken and Karen, so make sure everyone gets to know Ken and Karen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, we've got a question up here. Regarding the Bible, the study Bible, is there a certain version, uh, RSV, NSV? <laughs> That would be better than another. That Pastor, what are you going to preach out of? I mean, we'll, uh, a lot of times NIV, but the world, I think you'll be fine with whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dwight and I are New King James Version guys, aren't we? Yes. 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 But I don't know. Uh, you know we're probably, it won't be King James. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to get rid of the these and thou's, not that that's not that small, but we'll try to get somebody yeah, to speak. We'll, we'll just read the Hebrew. <laughs> 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 But on a daily basis, each, each evening, we will get together, we'll have a time together, and that's where Paul will be doing a lot of the, Paul will be leading the music, the we'll singing, worship service, will typically be in the evenings, they may have some impromptu on the uh, bus or site, I mean, we're, each day we'll, we'll kind of make some of that up as we go, as the work's going to be, but each evening we'll plan on having a little worship service at time. Um, I mean, you're not going to go want to watch TV. So <laughs> hanging out with each other, have a little time of worship. They talk about the events of the day that we've seen, and the things that maybe wowed you or didn't. And there'll also be explanation of the next day, 
be at the bus at 7 a.m. with your bags packed, <coughs> breakfast eaten, and ready to roll. I like that, Linda. That's kind of stuff that Sherry always loved. <laughs> What's first on the plane as far as eats or anything? Um, on the plane, quite often anymore nowadays, uh, they'll have uh, some basic snacks. Um, personally, I'll buy a few snacks and take them, or on that, in the big flight, uh, they'll have, probably have, you have to purchase those. And they are pretty proud of their prices. So. <laughs> Uh, so there's there's food, but I mean, if you just pack some in your bag, I mean, you know. Lowell's not gonna go hungry. We're worried about you, Lowell. <laughs> Lowell, he said he was. He thought you know, he's scared. So Linda, he Linda, he, we'll make sure you <laughs> throw in a couple extra rolls in the bottom of your bag there for a roll. Keep him, keep him going there. Yeah. Lowell's, Lowell's in my Lowell's in my small group. We always joke with him. He likes to eat. Dwight. This insurance card. Is it, is it better to? Cut that out, put it in the plastic cover. It's however you want to handle it, but that's what you're going to have to have to give if you have a need. So it's up to you. And that is, each one is individualized to you individually. So, yeah, go ahead, Melissa. For the travel insurance, when does that money come Okay, quiet, I can't. Sometimes it's quiet. Quiet. I can't hear. Let's get, what? The travel insurance money, if you were wanting to pay for the travel insurance itself, when does that have to be? They have a pretty fast turnaround, but I would say get it done sooner than later, in a couple yeah. weeks. I think you can do it. Just call them. Any other questions? Like I said, we're not going to meet again until we see each other in the dark, loading up. To go on the first international trip uh, travel out of Brighton, Indiana. Uh, we're going to make history. Any questions? Everything? Sure I am so. These, what? You'd be sure to wear these as we leave, right? It would be nice if you wore your, your shirts or at least your sweatshirts that first day. It'd be kind of cool. You don't have to, but the, the sweatshirts in particular are the days traveling over and great traveling back. It would be kind of nice if you had them on for just making sure that's our person because um, one thing we haven't done, we got to put our heads together. We want to create a system of like a quick buddy system. So, like within the course of 30 seconds, I want to know if someone's missing. So we're going to have a few people in different groups, and if someone's missing, we need to know that. So we'll come up with a concept of how to put together a buddy system that we can quickly determine if someone's missing, we want to know. Maybe they're just in the restroom and had to wait in line and couldn't get there. And we'll wait. We just got to make sure who, what, and where. So. I have to take Scott's picture. <laughs> No. Scott's being honored. Laura, Laura will do it. Scott's being honored. I personally am so honored, humbled, and blessed and pleased uh, to be part of this group. And uh, I'm excited uh, on your behalf. I just hope and pray that when we come home, uh, that you will have an experience that will be with you the rest of your life. And I hope and pray that that experience will make you a more valuable witness uh, for what you've seen and saw and, and, uh, and convince you and to build your faith that the circle of people that you are around and you influence, and every one of us has circles of people that uh, they'll say, what happened to her? What happened to him? In a good way. And then it makes a difference. And I hope in our church here, it'll make a difference. I hope for our pastor, it helps to, to illuminate his knowledge and understanding and his experience, uh, too. I'm so thrilled that we have our pastor, Tiffany, with us, their full-time work. Uh, we have the Millimans. Are, are you still pastoring? In, are you, you still pastoring? Uh, so we got um, them as a, in our full-time work. We have the Mills, full-time Christian work. Um, we have the Tarantinos, who are missionaries, who are going to meet us there. Uh, I'm just... I'm just honored and I'm blessed to have good full-time Christian people. And many of you uh, know your Bible as well, and that's going to be exciting. Everything you ever learned in Sunday school will start to make sense. When, I, when we went there 10 years ago, I told my wife, I'm so glad now. I mean, all the time I spent in Sunday school, either teaching or, or being in Sunday school or listening to sermons, all came to value when I got there and saw it first time. So, okay. If no questions, you have your stuff, 
pay attention to the communications. There will be some communications. We're getting right down there of the exact timing and the small details. <clears throat> if any questions come up, we may have not thought of everything. We've tried to. Uh, we're getting the final seating assignments for the group of 10. Um, and then the final seating assignments went out yesterday, we're hoping, but it's not confirmed for all the group of 35. So um, we hope that uh, we'll get that all done. I'm going to tell you that the flight and everything over there will be grueling. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll put, I'll, I'll, I won't put any lipstick on that pig. <laughs> <laughs> and that first day will be a big deal. You're going to be fed out of a fire hose from that big long trip, and then you're going to be on that trip. And we're going to see a lot of, a lot of geography, a lot of places that day. And then it will calm down and get into a routine and a little bit more manageable from there. So it's exciting. I've asked George if he would close for us. Would you bless this group, George, please? Lord, we do thank you just for this chance of being able to go to Israel. Lord, I, I just, it just blows me away. I mean, we get the chance every single day to be able to spend time with you. I want to feel your presence. But to actually go over to Israel and just see the places that you have personally walked. Lord, give us understanding of what's in front of us, Lord. We just thank you right now. Just let us be able to uh, be praying for us as a group. Let us let everything go according <coughs> to the plans, Lord. Let us be able to be prepared, mentally prepared, physically prepared, and emotionally prepared as well. Lord, let us be able to enjoy this moment. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, George. Be praying for this group. We pray that we'll we won't have we pray that we have a boring trip from the standpoint of incidents and drama. <laughs> we don't want any drama. And so uh we just pray that everyone be healthy. Thank you, John. Thank you.